Welcome again to a webinar of the series of ECPGR grant scheme webinars. Um, today we have uh, Monica Hofer from G the Julius Kuhn Institute in Dresden, Pilnitz, Germany. She's the chair of the uh, Berries Working Group, a new group that was started in 2019. And um, uh, very soon they they had uh, this project um, funded by ECPGR for a collaborative action to update the documentation of buried genetic resources. So, um, Monica, uh, you have the floor and you can... Uh, yes, thank you very much for the introduction. My name is Monica Höfer. I come from the Julius Kühn Institute. This is a federal research center for cultivated plants in Germany. Altogether, we have 18 research institutes and our institute is the Institute for Breeding Research on Food Crops in Dresden, Pilnitz in Germany. I am responsible for the food genetic resources in our institute. I'm the curator of the Food Gene Bank with the cultivar and wild species collections. And I'm the curator of the German Food Gene Bank. This is a decentralized network of stakeholders and collections. Until uh, 2019, there was no ECPGR working group, but we had already uh, some European projects. The problems with the project is only a li limited number of partners, countries could be involved in these projects, and the time frame is always limited. And the topic of genetic resources covers only a small part of these projects. Several different aspects were important for the establishment of the new working group. First is strawberry is on the Annex 1 list of international treaty on plant genetic resources for food and agriculture. And for the other food species like Malus, Purus, Prunus, ACPGR working groups have existed for a long time and were very active. Based on these considerations, a proposal for the establishment of the ECPGR Working Group for Berries was submitted in 2018 and was approved by the Steering Committee. Today, we have uh, 51 members from 22 countries, which are members of our Working Group. On the next slide, you can see uh, photo from our first meeting of the working group, and this was in January 2020, just before uh, COVID. Um, this meeting was organized by ECPGR and our institute. 18 members from 17 countries were present. The meeting was very important for us in order to become familiar with the structure, the objectives of ECPGR, and especially the mode of operation. At the end of the meeting, we decided to make uh, to write a proposal for a project for the fourth call for proposals under the ECPGR activity grant scheme. And now we are coming to our webinar title, to the collaborative action for updating the documentation about buried genetic resources in Europe. The project was approved and could be started in April 2021. We have three main aims. Uh, the first one is with the implementation of the project, the varieties, the cultivars of the buried genetic resources will be recorded and will be uh, uh, introduced in the Eurisco database. Secondly, a first draft of crop specific uh, technical guidelines for gene bank management of buried genetic resources will be elaborated. And both results provide the basis for the further work for the Berries Working Group, for instance, for characterization projects. At the beginning of our uh, project, we have to decide and we had a question, what should we include in genetic resources in Berries? Uh, we have a definition in botany and we have a definition in traditional everyday language for Berries. Berries under both definitions could 
include blueberries, cranberries, and gooseberries or elderberries. The fruits of currants, black currants, red and white currants are botanically berries, but their used names do not include the word berry. On the other hand, several different kinds of fruits called berries, but they are botanically not berries, like the blackberry, raspberry, or strawberry. Uh, because of a large number of plants which species belong to uh, berry genetic resources, the activities of the working course will be diverse and we have to concentrate our work. For the preparation of the inventories, this is our first aim of the project, or it was our first aim of the project, I sent the working group members the descriptor list for updating passport data to URISCO. This uh, document is available on the website of the URISCO uh, website. And second, uh, the second part is I sent a template for the inventory as an Excel file with some additional descriptors important for our future work. Here you can see the template. Um, I don't want to mention all descriptors in, in this Excel file in detail, but many because many of the Eurisco descriptors are used to define wild type accessions. These have been included for our uh, template. The green marked uh, descriptors were obligatory. Furthermore, we are interested in the type of germplasm storage because we could um, preserve our collections in field collection in vitro or cryo and the others means also greenhouse or greenhouse. And we included two additional descriptors like you can see here. These are, should be interesting for our further characterization projects. The virus status and the variety check uh, for trueness to type. On the next slide, you can see a summary. 18 partners of the working group sent the expression of interest to participate in the activity. Altogether, 17 inventories from partners of 16 countries were, were available at the beginning of the project. The partners sent uh, the inventory separated into the genera Fragaria, Rubus, Ribus, and Vaccinium, and other minor species, like you can see here. In preparation uh, for the project, um, partners were also asked whether they could would be interested in evaluating the inventories of one genus as a member of a project group. Here you can see as the persons which are included in the uh, project working group, in the working group of project. These are uh, people, um, colleagues from Lithuania, from Fragaria, uh, Eric from Rubus, from Germany, Darinka for Vaccinium, Sila for Ribes, and Eleni from Greece for the other minor Chino um, speech um, genera. With the confirmation of the project proposal, three online conferences were held with all members of the project working group and we discussed in the, the work in detail to reach our first aim, the documentation of berry genetic resources in Europe. The members of the project group have got the inventories of the berry genetic resources they should ask the partners for the missing data of the template or even for additional accessions and to create a unified list of accessions for each genus. The deadline was 2021. After the, uh, um, the next step was a revision of the list containing the taxonomy, the species names, the variety names, and of course the integration of the passport data. The green taxonomy should be used if possible. That means if the genus or the species are listed on green, the US National Plant Shown Plasm System. After this, the variety denominations have been adjusted according to the rule that the variety name is considered to be the original one, which is used in the country of origin. And all other denominations should be listed as synonyms. 
Furthermore, passport data have to be included from the partners, giving by the partners, coming from literature, and also passport data coming from former AU projects like Chinberry or Ribesco. Here you can see the results. Altogether, 4,061 accessions of buried genetic resources were mentioned, were summarized in the inventories. Mostly, of course, 37% were from Fragaria, the strawberries. With the next slide, I will introduce some genus in detail. On the slide, you can see the different species of strawberry with the current number of accessions in the collection of the project partners. The largest number of accession is found, of course, on the cultivated strawberries with 1,355 accessions. Our cultivated strawberries, of course, is a hybrid species coming from a hybrid Fragaria shiloensis and Fragaria virginiana. On the other hand, we have also some selections and varieties of our native European species, which you can see on the next slide. These are Fragaria vesca and Fragaria moschata. For Fragaria, the common list contains 762 different Fragaria ananasa cultivars or culture strawberries. Among them, 537 were unique accessions stored in only one of the collections. And we have also got information on the virus status of strawberries and of the methods and identification of the genus to type. On Rubus, we have uh, for Rubus we have 578 accessions, mainly on raspberry, blackberry, and we have also find some hybrid accessions, which you can see here with this cultivar dormant red. The next uh, genus is Ribus with 100 with 1,347 accessions for black currant, red currant. Or gooseberries. For vaccinium, we have uh, only 213 accessions coming from eight partners. More or less, we have the American blueberry, the blueberries, or the lingonberries. At the beginning of the project, uh, the project working group discussed what are genetic resources in berries and what should be included in particular in the term other genera of berries genetic resources. Based on the discussion about the definition of the berry genetic resources, another specific request was sent to all partners for the term other gen genera of berry genetic resources. And on this table, you can see what we can collect. Altogether, uh, we can, could collect 161 mulberry accession, 51 elderberry accession. We could uh, collect uh, sea bug zone, but also the mountain ash. So you can see this is really the diverse berry genetic resources. Now I would uh, summarize the first part of our project. On the next slide, you can see it. With the implementation of the project, the cultivars, mainly the cultivars of the buried genetic resources, were recorded in the countries. The data were ha harmonized, evaluated, and will be available um, on, in the ORISCO database. What we have achieved altogether, 17 inventories from 16 partners were available. More than 4,000 accessions were mentioned. And after the revision of the inventory by the persons of the project group, the revised inventories were sent back to the partners in February this year. And finally, they should transmit to the Eurisco database via the national focal point of each country. Last month, I asked the partners regarding the final results. And you can, oh, excuse me, you can see 17 inventories were returned to the partners. 15 partners confirmed the transmission to the focal, national focal point. Two responses are missing from Estonia and France. 
And two partners informed me that the position of the national focal point is not filled from Greece and Turkey. And the partners from Norway, Sweden, and Finland informed me that the data will be first entered into the Nordgene database and then can go to the Eurisco database. Now I would like to come uh, and say some words about our second aim. The second aim is the elaboration of the crop-specific technical guidelines for genetic management of buried genetic resources. With the first query on the existing, existing accessions also included the, the, the descriptor type of germplasm storage. Most of our temperate uh, food species are genetically heterozygous and vegetatively propagated. A seed collection will not represent the true genotype of the clonal accession, that means the cultivars. The collection of very genetic sources are maintained in the field or greenhouse as active plantation, where the accessions are available for characterization, evaluation, and distribution. This is an advantage. But on the other side, backups for the plant material are needed to provide security in case of disease or environmental disaster. The duplicate collection could be a second field site, an in vitro cold storage, or a cryopreservation. On the next slide, I will show you some examples. Here you can see our strawberry collection ex situ, the field collection from the federal plant variety ovens, our greenhouse in vitro cold storage, but also the cryopreservation in our institute. And also for the rubus, ribus, and roses, we have field collection or collections in greenhouse or greenhouses. Mm. On the next, uh, I have summarized the results. And here you can see the percentage distribution of accessions in the various methods of preserving genetic resources in berries. Only for Fragaria, uh, in the case in, in the in vitro culture and the cryopreservation makes a significant contribution to build up a duplicate. Of course, we can find some um, collections for rebus, rubus, and vaccinium in vitro and cryopreservation, but only some accessions in these collections. Based on the results of the first request regarding the forms of preservation, a second template was developed, which was sent to all project partners in order to request the detailed method of conservation. The template contained exact questions on the cultivation of plants of exito collection in the field or in the greenhouse, as well as for the in vitro or the cryopreservation. Here you can see some examples which we ask for for the exito cultivation in the field. Contributions uh, were made by all 18 partners by the end of 2022. So the preparation of the first draft of crop specific technical guidelines of gene bank management for berries, genetic resources could be started. And the Prunus specific standards for gene bank management served as an example. I write the first draft and we will send this, this draft to all partners of the working group for discussion. The aim is to establish quality standards for conservation it, that means minimal standards and publish these on the website of ECPGR. I would like to come to the end. We can say all objectives of the Europe Berries project were achieved. An extension to the initial plan time was requested to different reasons. The main reason was that for the individual partners of the action working with Eurisco passport data, was a new area, so that many explanations were necessary and the work was delayed. The situation was the same for some members of the project group who had volunteered to receive the inventory and the passport data. Nevertheless, the, this action gave the newly established working group the opportunity to work together for the first time in, within the framework of the ECPGR 
and to make themselves known with a working method of the ECPGR. And a grant will be requested for a second group meeting to present the results to the majority of the members and to discuss further projects. And I will, the results of the project will be also presented by the next progress meeting of the EU project breeding value in order to identify common aims for the further work of genetic resources in berries. And I think the project was the basis for establishing the first step towards a long-term work for conservation, characterization, duplication, and utilization for genetic resources in berries. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Monica, for the very clear presentation of your work, successful work, it seems. And um, let's see if there are any questions from the participants. We have uh, more than 30 participants from various working groups and uh, national coordinators. So let's see if there are questions. You can uh, request the question raising your hand. Your hand. Maybe a question from my side, uh, uh, Monica, and I think you can stop uh, the uh, sharing the, your screen, by the way. Yes, I should stop. Yes, you can stop. Um, so, yeah, you, you already said that this was uh, successful um, in general, uh, but um, could you identify any particular pros or cons in in the implementation of this uh, grant scheme activity mm -hmm. difficulties that you <laughs> encountered as i told you already for us it was uh, always in, all, for many members of the working group it was really new as a mode of operation in ecpgr so I think it was good to have this project to start with uh, uh, this documentation and to collect the, um, what we have in very genetic resources. And I think now we can go step by step with um, this characterization protest, projects, I think so. And now I, I think step by step, the members of the working group can also find uh, how it is possible to work and how we, they can include also the our the institute uh, in aims of the institute in the work of the ECPGR group. I think this was really necessary to uh, start with this maybe more or less simple project, but it was really necessary. Okay, thank you, thank you, Monica. And uh, you expect that um, the crop specific standards will be ready yes. in in a short uh, time yes or? i i you know i i summarized the data and i wrote uh, the first draft but it's really necessary to send this uh, draft to the people and to discuss what can we say what is the minimal standard because uh, you know we have different um, species we have different genera so it's very it's not so easy to find a simple way to find one word for a standard so we have to decide the, the general but we have to also dis decide what can we do for preserving uh, berry genetic resources because i can see as a replantation for strawberries we mm -hmm. use uh, two years other partners use three years for replantation and it depends also on the source with which the partners have so we have to decide which what should be the minimal standards. And that I cannot do it by myself. That's why we have to discuss this. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Monica. Let's see if there is any question from uh, the audience. It 
your your presentation was very clear and uh, <laughs> i think uh, you covered also the questions that i had <laughs> prepared before so and um yes we have one question from marianne marianne lefort go ahead marianne you can unmute <laughs> Is that better? Yeah. Yes, yeah. go ahead. Thank you very much, Monica. That was very interesting to start with uh, little things and to continue to build up until you arrive to a consensual view with uh, all your members. I had just a question uh, concerning uh, one of the last sentence, sentences you had about the interaction between uh, what was going on uh, with uh, ECPGR and what is the link with uh, future project EU funded. Because you, you evocated something, but I, I didn't get it. And uh, for me, before you answer, it is a very important thing to have a sort of uh, how do you say, help me, Lorenzo, locomotive to uh, help ECPGR to go further and to be a sort of, uh, to anticipate what could be done at ECPGR level with few others going on uh, as locomotive. Uh, yes, you know, um, I, our institute is a member of the AU project Breeding Value, which yeah. is uh, going on until 2024, 2025. And I think in this, um, from this project, we, we can decide maybe some characterization, smaller characterization projects, which we can take over to our ECPGR group, because some members of the AU project and some members of our ECPGR group are the same, so we can continue our work. This, when there is a new proposal in, in a new grant of ECPGR, because the AU project is finished, and so we can have to decide which could be important to investigate more in detail and of course, this could be only a small part of our work, but I think yeah. it could be interesting to find further synergies. Yeah, thank you very much. And good luck anyway. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, let's see if there are any other questions. Or oh, if not, Nora, do you have any idea of... Um... Uh, there is a question from Tatiana. Tatiana? Why? Yeah. Oh, yes, Tatiana. Go ahead, Tatiana. Tatiana, you can speak. Go ahead. Tatiana, you you can speak if you can. We see your hand being raised, but we cannot hear you. You're unmuted, so you should be able to speak, Tatiana. Yeah, go ahead, Tatiana. Oh, no, it seems not. Then uh... maybe you can write the question in the chat if you can manage to speak.
Okay, in the meantime, Nora, can you? Oh, echo. Yes, Tatiana uh, has a problem with the microphone. So maybe you can write your question in, uh, in the chat. Uh, the other Tatiana has raised a hand. Maybe Tatiana Kokai. You are muted. Try to unmute. Go ahead, you can speak. Okay. Uh, I have interest for me, uh, pre Presentation, I am Tatiana Koka from uh, Agriculture University of Tirana, uh, Genetic Resource Institute. And uh, uh, congratulations for uh, this meeting. For me, it's the first time uh, to um, collaboration with you in this meeting. Uh, I have interest to know uh, this uh, piece, uh, the Monica Hanke uh, presentation in this uh, material, uh, strawberry, cranberry, mulberry, etc. And uh, in the list, I saw uh, an Albanian country, but the, the chief of this group I know is uh, Alban. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have interest to know, uh, have uh, uh, including in this list, uh, some species which uh, found in Albanian country, for example, uh, mulberry, uh, Morus alba, Morus nigra, or Morus rose, or uh, uh, other cornel max. Uh, for this, I have interest because I uh, working for this year uh, for this piece. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, but uh, uh, um, those species are including for me in the uh, subtropical tree and uh, in the minor fruit, but no the berry fruit uh, are including in the list for Albanian this those species. I I cannot see now in detail. I have to check it. But you are on the list of the ECPGR members of our working group or not? I don't know. For me, it's the first time in this meeting. Uh, maybe you should, uh, could you send me an email with your, uh, so I have your address and we can speak together um, bilateral? I have interest to know. Is it possible uh, a letter of this meeting uh, with communication of for course. this problem? Of course, of course, with a pleasure. Yes, of course, yes. you could contact me. Yeah? Yes, um, uh, and uh, a congratulations on your presentation is very, very good. Okay, thank you. And very thank much. you, thank you. Thank you, Tatiana. And, uh, <clears throat> I can, re I can uh, remind you that you can always uh, contact your national coordinator to to become a member of the group or your national focal point to add the data to the um, from Albania to Eurisco. It is possible. Okay. Any other question? Or again, I'm asking Nora if there is any, sorry, Nora, any plan for a future webinar? Not um, this year, certainly, but uh... no, not not this year, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> um, but but for sure we plan to have uh, three more next year. So uh, if there are candidates who wants to present their, uh, yes, we will activity. try to continue yes. this series. Yeah. yeah. So I think it, it's great to give visibility to what happens in these activities and the outcomes of the grant scheme. So we will continue next year. Uh, if there are any candidates, please contact me uh, or Lorenzo so we can follow up. And we will send more information about the calendar for next year as soon as it's available. Thank you. Thank you, Nora. And, and I would like to thank very much, Monica, for your will to present and uh, the very good presentation, very very clear and, and the success with your projects.
Thank so you. goodbye and see you in the next webinar series. Okay. Bye.